Okay. All right, it's Wednesday. So that's second section day. Thank you for joining me. So last week we uh, had some repeat movement, which was a really nice break, at least for me. <laughs> I love the first section too. So today we're gonna start with our practice. We'll start with cross hands all the way through to white crane spreads its wing. And then we're gonna work on needle at sea bottom. And if we have time, we'll put in fan through the back. And I just wanna um, put it out up front. I have a problem with my right knee that I'm still recovering from. I had a bit of a skateboarding accident almost a year ago. So you're gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys to fold forward and needle at sea bottom, but I'm not actually gonna do it every time, <laughs> okay? So let's get started with our practice and let's start at cross hands. I'm gonna face the other direction. Let's start out. Make sure to look down your feet or shoulder width. Sink down, try to relax your waist here. Your head's lifting up, your shoulders are dropping down, your right arm's crossed over the left. We're gonna shift our weight, turning, embrace the tiger, return to the mountain. Separate the arms, step out, just like brush knee, open up and show striking. Roll back, connect out, shifting back and turn. Circle in, touch the forearm for press. Square up the body, open the arms, pulling back, then sit up the palms for push. Fist under elbow, transition like single whip, turning, and then we push out to the side as we relax the foot, step, Ward off, rotate, re-step, empty stance on the heel, fist under elbow. Repulse monkey, circle the arms, step back, rotate, pushing off the heel. Circle, step, one forward, one back. Number three. Hands in front of the shoulder when the foot touches, show striking. Circle the arms, step into the corner, diagonal flying. White crane, arms open up, we step behind, we change to the heel, waist turning, close the arms. White crane, circle down, step, when the arms close, open up, touch with the toes, white crane spreads its wings. Now hold for one second. How's your stance here? Is the weight on your bubbling well? Are your shoulders relaxed down? Is there a little bit of lean in your torso? Okay, how did we do? Yes, I like a little dancing, that's awesome. That means we're doing really good. <laughs> so any questions on what we've been working on so far? How was your practice this week? Did everyone get a chance to practice? Good, awesome. Okay, so let's see, because I think we can, let's do that again, okay? Needle at sea bottom, the footwork is pretty easy, so we won't have to spend a lot of time on it. So let's practice and get moving again, okay? So let's start at cross hands. And I'm just gonna cue the movements this time, okay? So cross hands. Embrace the tiger. Return to the mountain. Roll back. Press. And press. Push. Transition to fist. Fist under elbow. Repulse monkey, number one. 
Number two. And three. Diagonal flying. White crane spreads its wings. Oops, sorry, raise hands. Now white crane. Okay. How do we do with that compared to when I give you all the cues? Do you feel like you can get through that whole uh, section yourself? Okay, good. All right, so then let's get started on needle at sea bottom. This is actually a really fun move. Um, I'm gonna fully demonstrate it one or two times. And then, like I said, I'm not gonna go down as far just to protect my knee. We have to go with where our body is today, right? So we go from white crane to brush knee. So this is a transition just like we had. We were working on this last week, despite that I forgot to include it in our warm up. So we go into brush knee, we step, we have our normal bow stance. Needle at sea bottom. We shift our weight forward, our fingertips point down, we step in. We pull back, our left arm comes up, we're on our heel. We change to our ball of our foot and we sink down. And that's needle at sea bottom, okay? So the footwork is similar to what movement from the first section? Who knows? Strumming the lute. Yes, and Rebecca did it too, that's correct. So this is repeat foot movement, okay? So everyone, let's start in our bow stance. So our left foot is forward. Standard bow stance, so shoulder width apart. Take a moment and look at your stance. This is our practice, right? So we can check everything out. We're gonna shift our weight forward and we're gonna re-step narrower and shorter. And then we move our weight back. We change to our heel this time and make sure your knee is in a line here. So we don't want it caved and we want our quad open. We change to a ball of our foot and then sink your hips down. So we bend forward and we sink. Good, very good, okay? That looks really good. Everyone's actually sinking down. So what we wanna avoid when we do this is we don't just wanna do this. Okay, we don't just wanna fold forward from the front. No matter what our stance is, even if we have a shorter stance, we still wanna sink down a little bit, okay? Sink down. Good. Okay, let's do it again. So from our brush knee, left foot forward. Make sure we have a nice corner, nice straight. Shift our weight forward, step in. Now, as we move our weight back, our waist opens kind of to the corner. We change to the ball of the foot, and as we sink down, our waist turns. Any questions? We're good? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. So, Cheryl? Is that a question? Yeah. So, when we're stepping back, this is more refinement, I guess, are we stepping like um toe back to our heel or do we just like a nice flat step toe ball heel okay so when we step forward we step heel ball toe when we step back ball heel toe ball heel good question all right let's do it one more time keeping that in mind okay so from our bow stance, left foot forward. We're gonna shift our weight forward. Our toes are the last thing to leave the ground. We step, toe, ball, heel. Shift our weight back, we come up on our heel. 
we change to the ball of our left foot and then we sink down. And we come up. Okay, how did that feel? Was that different this time? Okay, good. Any questions, any more questions on the footwork? It is nice that it's a little bit of a repeat movement. We always looking Veronica, forward. Veronica, you're muted. Are we always looking yes. forward? Yes, so we'll talk about that in a second because when we're looking forward here, we're actually looking towards our palm and then we're still looking forward and then we're kind of looking down, but we're not looking down like this. Head lifting up, looking down. I thought that we were- That was good, Veronica. I thought that our gaze- Yeah, Mary. I thought even though our gaze, our head was down, our eyes were looking out still, not down at the ground. Yeah, you're looking out. towards the- Like beyond well, your horizon, not, not at the ground, but- Well, so I'm not looking out there. I'm looking kind of here because that's where my opponent is, oh. right? So like- Not, not at your foot. Like my but... opponent- no, I'm not looking down here, but I'm not looking like this up at you. I'm okay. kind of looking the eight feet below my computer. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, let's talk hand movements. So needle at sea bottom, I'm gonna come closer so that you can see. So we're in our brush knee. We shift our weight forward and our fingertips point down. We pull back, our elbow sinks down, our left arm comes up, okay? So we wanna end up by our forehead, forehead height, I should say. But see the space between my head and my hand? So that's very important. That allows us to keep our shoulder and elbow down. Good, everyone's left palm looks really good. Okay, so let's just do that part again. So we're from here from brush knee, when we shift our weight forward, our fingertips point down. We pull back, our left arm comes up and our elbow sinking down and our fingertips, our hand is in maybe what's a little bit of an awkward shape. Now, why is our hand like this? Everyone relax. We lost so, our oh, oh. I, I know I'm having issues with my mic today. I'm gonna have to figure it out. It kind of is going. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry guys. My headset's like going in and out while I'm talking. It's there most of the time. So does anyone know the meaning of the movement before I describe it? I like to test your knowledge. Yes, Rebecca. <laughs> yes. So what happens is someone's grabbing you and the reason your fingertips point down is because you're trying to slide your hand. So you're trying to be slippery and slide out. So that's why we go and we point down first. So if someone grabs you, you're gonna let them grab you. And then you're gonna try to pull back. So our left arm will actually hold our opponent as we pull and try to pull out of the grab, okay? Yes. So it's just pull. Do we it's, our, and, I'm sorry, do we keep our thumbs kind of folded down or? Yeah, it's not like this. It was not like this, okay. thumb up, it's. But it's, it's not like, like this. Not like <laughs> it's just an open palm, but you wanna think what's happening is you're trying to pull out. Cause it looks, yes. from my view here, it looks like I can't see your thumb. So it looks, either your hand is angled or your thumb is lower than your fingers. Yeah, my, um, so I played clarinet for 15 years. My thumb has a weird shape to it. It sits like this naturally <laughs> from holding an instrument. So it does go low sometimes, but you would want it more like this. Oh, but my thumb okay. just kind of folds. <laughs> okay. okay. It's, it's one of those things that after so many years I've tried to correct. And if you look this way, you can see the straightness here when it should actually be more like this, <laughs> but it's, it's a natural, <laughs> when I was a kid, I played for so long that it's like my hand just wants to hold an instrument sitting on this weight. 
<laughs> so you definitely want to keep it a little bit more open if you can. Mine just kind of hangs down a little bit. Okay. So that so let's put the legs and the arms together now that we understand the meaning. We're just going to do the first part. Okay. So from our brush knee, let's make sure we have a really good stance here. Always starting, checking our starting point, shoulders and elbows down, head lifting up. So we're gonna shift our weight forward and tilt our fingertips down. Our toes touch, our heel touches and we start pulling back and our waist turns and we're up on our heel. Okay, let's do that again. So stepping out back to a bow stance, Shift your weight forward, fingertips point down. Heel touches, weight starts moving back, waist turning. How do we feel about that? Yes, good arm check there. I saw that. Yep, elbows down, elbows and shoulders down here. Yes, we never wanna do this. There's a big difference from pulling back like this versus pulling back like this. Can you guys see the difference? So back, the shoulders up, or back, shoulder down. Yes. Okay, so the second part of this movement, just let's talk about the hands again. So we're in brush knee, we've shifted, we've pulled back, okay? Now what we do is we change to our toes, but we're gonna sink down. Okay, so when we do this sinking down, most importantly, our waist is turning. So we're going from open to closed, from corner to straight. When we do this downward movement with our arm, we want an arc, like a diver going into the water. So arc, we don't just wanna go down, we don't wanna go straight and then try to go down. Everything's circular, so we want a nice arc. Now, when we do this, our left arm just follows our body, okay? So we've pulled back and our left arm just follows. So it doesn't really change. When we're up corner, it's high. As we turn, it starts to sink and it sinks more and follows our body. Does that make sense? Okay. I uh, just wanted to, I just noticed that when I typically do this, when I come for the, to move my hand out, I'm actually, I'm raising my shoulder to make my arc higher. Now I that, think we need to keep the shoulder down and use shoulder the, down because you're probably, yes. Okay. So instead it's more forward and then curves down. So we don't go up and down. We go out and down. Yeah, Marion, that went straight out. <laughs> yes, yeah, so pr just practice this movement, just just knowing this movement and just being in some sort of empty stance, your weight's kind of back and just folding and using your waist here and coming back up, just feeling this, feeling that open to corner, squaring up and going down. Good. So Cheryl, yeah. When we're going down, is there any knee bending at all, at all, or is it just more yes. behind a little teapot? No. So I'll I'll demonstrate how I normally do it, but watch closely because I can only do it one time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're in brush knee. Okay. We shift forward. We pull back. Now I'm at that normal height of my of my form, right? But when I change. I sink down, okay? So I go from normal and then I sink down and then I stand back up for fan through the back. So in order for you to sink down, there has to be more knee bend, okay? But when we do this, especially if we have a shorter stance, we don't just wanna do this. Can you, can you see that it's just all kind of butt sticking back and out, right? So, we want to sink down, like down in line with our ankle. So it's down this way. It's so not both, down this way. Both knees bend. A little bit, yes. Okay, I didn't know. Yes. That. Yeah, because 
I mean, your front leg doesn't change as much, but in order for me to sink down this way, my thigh is going to have to go to a lower position as well, right? So there will be knee bend in both knees. Good question. And you said that the, um, the left arm just follows the leg. Um, so, where do you stop with it? Where do you stop with the right hand? Because sometimes I see people's left hands, when they're down, their left hand is like higher up than mine. And I'm just wondering. That, that depends on how far you sink, okay. right? So if I'm here and I, let's see this way probably, and I only sink a little bit, it's gonna end up about here, okay? But if I sink lower, it's gonna be lower. So that depends on your flexibility and the strength in your legs. But they should be somewhat parallel, the two arms in height. This should feel like when it's sitting down for brush knee. Okay. That's what this should feel like. So we go from like what feels like a brush knee on up here, right? When we strike out for brush knee and then we sink down and it should feel like sitting like the other arm of brush knee. So when, when we do this, arms are about the same height no matter where you are, they're about the same from the floor. I think that's what you were asking, Marianne. Your arms are about the same height. <laughs> <laughs> My arms are not about the same height. Okay, thank yeah. you. To well, me, this also a, to me, that's just another move where your arm isn't moving, your body is moving and your arm is just going along with it. That's correct. So your left arm, that is absolutely correct. Okay, we are to the corner and when we close, we're already closing and sinking, so our arm is immediately gonna start dropping. Now, that doesn't really apply for the right arm because the right arm is doing its own thing. But for the left arm, yes. Okay, so before we practice this again, we talked about the first half of the meaning, right? Which is grabbing and pulling out. Now, why do we have the sinking down part of this movement? This is if our opponent has a really strong grip and this didn't work. They're latched on, okay? So what happens, and we don't show this in the form, but it's important to know this meaning. I'm gonna try to show you. So what happens is you come under your opponent's arm and you would break their grab. So you would come under their arm and then as you sink, you use your body weight because what happens is they come into a really awkward wrist position. Yes, Yukiko. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? I know that is like the weirdest, like we don't describe it, but this is the same thing like fist under elbow. We ward off and this is grabbing, but we don't close our hand and show grabbing. We keep our alignment. This is the same thing. So the meaning is there, it's that we've pulled they didn't let go, so we come over, so we come inside, up, and then we sink down. But we aren't rotating our hand to show that. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry, my headset is a mess today. <laughs> but we are not going to rotate our hand to show that at all. No. Okay. It's just that this is the meaning. So we wanna know that we're pulling back and if they don't, we're gonna come inside on their grab and we're gonna come over their wrist and we're gonna sink and break the grab as we sink down, okay? So now let's do this movement knowing the meaning, okay? Because knowing the meaning can help us a lot. Oh yeah, Allison. I have a question. Um, yeah. So you, you talked about when oh, we- you're muted. Sorry, when we sink down, we move our, our upper body moves square, but our hips, do they still have to stay to the corner? Yes, they're still slightly open. So this is where the waist comes into play. This is one of those movements like, um, like even like from roll back, from ward off, our hips stay the same direction, but we rotate. So this is the same thing. Our hips stay in the same direction, but we rotate and sink. So we're not, if, if we turned our hips in this movement, the knee would come in, 
Okay, so we wanna keep the hips open. We wanna rotate from our waist, our back. We wanna rotate. So we're from open, rotate and sink. Okay, good. All right, so let's put it all together from brush knee, okay? Left foot forward, nice bow stance to start. Maybe make sure it's a natural stance here, okay? So you know you can pick up. Right arms out in front. Shift your weight forward, fingertips point down. Your toes touch. Weight moves back, pulling back. Waist open to the corner. Change to the toes. Sinking down, waist turning. And relax. Okay, let's do it one more time. I'm just gonna watch this one, okay? So from brush knee, Nice looking brush knees. All right, shift your weight forward. Fingertips point down. Touch with the toes, pull back as your weight shifts back. Good, change to the ball of the foot and sink down. Good. Wow, beautiful. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? That looked really, really good, actually. I'm super impressed with you guys. So Cheryl, how far apart front to back should my feet be? It seems like yours are quite a bit spread further than mine. Is there- This a is based on your stance, right? So this is this should be natural. So when we do this stance here, this is my natural bow stance. Mm -hmm. So what, what happens is we're going to an empty stance. So we're stepping in narrower, so from side to side, and shorter. So then we can shift, and when we touch with our toes, this should be our empty stance. So the way that we test, if our principles are correct, if empty and full is clear, can you pick up and step to a bow stance? Mm -hmm. Can you shift back? and change to your empty stance. So that's how we know if our stance is correct for our bodies. Everyone's stance is gonna be a different size because right. everyone's shoulders are a different width and everyone's legs have a different amount of strain. So it's gonna be what it is for you. Now this stance is an empty stance. So that means there's one line between our feet and our feet are on two sides. Right. Okay, so we go from shoulder width we step in closer and narrower, right? So if we have our plane, right, we're here with our two and we're in a far stance, I'm bringing this foot in closer and narrower. Okay, so we're going from shoulder width, this foot would be at the corner like this, and we're stepping in closer and narrower. Okay, okay so let's do it one more time. Really testing our stance this time. So forget about the arms. If you don't wanna do them, you don't have to. Let's work on our stance, okay? So find a good bow stance. Move your weight back, check. Can you pick up your foot? Put your foot back down and go to your bow stance. Good. Let's put our arms up for brush knee if you want to. If you just wanna focus on the legs, forget the arms. Shift your weight forward. Keep your front knee in line with your foot, step with your toes. Heel, heel comes down. As you shift back, keep your knee in line with your toe direction. Now take a look down. Is your knee in line? Actually look at your leg. It's very easy here to have it tilted in, so make sure that we're rounded. Change to the ball of your foot. As you sink down, Feel that same feeling in your right leg that it's still following the toe direction. And then come, just come back up. Now, do we do better with our legs? I'm generally not in the right empty stance. I'm either crossing or I'm too far apart. <laughs> <laughs> that takes time, but the thing is, that means you're honing it in, right? <laughs> so it's the same thing with your bow stance. Like at first we'll be too wide, then we'll be too narrow. And so we hone it in. The fact that you know that is huge. <laughs> so great self-analysis there. <laughs> okay, how does everyone feel about needle at sea bottom? Okay, 
So the second half of this class is gonna be fan through the back. So this is from needle at sea bottom. So I'm just gonna demonstrate one time. I'm not gonna sink down very low, but you'll understand the meaning, okay? So we're in our empty stance and we've sunk down. We lift up, our left arm comes to our right wrist. Lifting up, we step out for bow stance and then one arm forward, one back, okay? So here, we wanna make sure we're not here. We wanna be out in front and then our right arm pulls back, okay? So the footwork is the same as, who knows, maybe Rebecca, cause she was on the first one. Yes, the body is the same as single whip, Veronica, but the footwork transition, where do we do this other, uh, in another place? First section. Strum the lute. Yep, hand strums the lute to brush knee. Okay, so it's the same footwork. Okay, so we go from our needle at sea bottom. We've sunk down. We lift back up. We pick up and we step shoulder width and then we shift our weight forward. And we end up in what is similar to single whip. Our body is upright, just like ward off left or single whip. Our body's upright and we'll be looking forward. Okay? Does uh, everyone understand the footwork? I just have a question about the placement of the left hand. It doesn't grip the forearm of the, or the hand of the right hand. It just lays flat against it. Is that right? Yes. Oh, it's yeah, not we're, we're going to talk about that right now. Okay. It, I, just give me one second. I got you. Okay, so the footwork is pretty easy. So we'll go over that more when we practice the arm movements, okay? So I'm going to show you from the straight direction. So we're at needle at sea bottom, right? We've sunk down. We're going to turn this arm. The right arm turns and rotates, okay? And as it does this, it's going to stay out front. Okay, good. So not bending the elbow. It's just going to rotate out front because what's going to happen is it's going to lift up and then pull back. Okay, and this is the same as we were doing with needle at sea bottom kind of. Needle at sea bottom, our elbows more sunk down, but we're kind of by the temple area. Here, it's a little bit higher and our palms facing out, okay? So with this movement, we're sunk down, we're gonna rotate and our palm just touches on our wrist. So it's just touching. So we go from needle at sea bottom. As we lift up, we touch. And there's a little bit of a lifting motion here. So you're helping to lift. And see how my arm's out here? Because we're gonna do one forward, one back. We really wanna show this. We wanna show pulling, okay? This is another one where you could have an opponent that grabbed you and you're gonna trap their hand with your hand and you're gonna grab with your right arm and then you're gonna pull them into your strike. So kind of like repulse monkey, one forward, one back, one forward, one back. So we do not arch that, that pull back. We don't bring it up in a semicircle over our head. We just go straight back to the, our temple area. Straight back. So you've lifted up and we're not gonna go like this. It's another pulling back, okay. pulling back. So, you need, so to get your, you need to bring it up high enough so that it's in the right position to pull straight back. So you go up yes. to the height and that's when you pull back. Yep, so we've, we've sunk down. We're touch we're lifting and then pulling back so we're not going to be touching down here and then we're not going to arc like this we're going to connect and we're going to help lift now what this does is this lifts your opponent's arm right so you can imagine even when you're in this position you're exposed right this is all exposed so when you lift your opponent's arm you're gonna expose them so you can pull back and you have all the side body targets here. Now, if you're down here, look at, you're still covering 
your side body. So your opponent is going to have protection. Now the side body is one of the most, uh, now, the least covered areas, okay? There's not a lot of muscle on our ribs in this area, right? So if we strike this area, it's going to hurt. So when we're doing this, we want to expose them and then pull them into our strike. So we're not just striking. And that's why when we do this, we don't want to do it from here and then just go out, right? We don't just want to go out. We want to come from in front of our body and pull. So one forward, one back, yin, yang, opposing energies combining to make a stronger force. Okay. Good. Let's try to do it together. Okay. So let's just start at our needle at sea bottom. And let me be clear, this is very intense for all of us, knee injury or not. So if you do not want to sink down, take care of your body, take care of your legs, okay? This is a lot of right leg movement today. So you can just start here and just have a little bit of bend, okay? As we lift up, left arm touches your wrist. We keep lifting up as we step out for our bow stance. Our weight moves forward and we pull and separate the arms. Now check here. Are you sitting upright or are you lean forward? We wanna feel like we're in single whip. And then if you take your right arm and you fan it out to the side and make a hook, it should feel exactly like single whip. We just bend the elbow, the hand comes closer to the temple, we can go back to the hook. It should feel the same. Does it feel the same for you? Let's see it. People are holding it, let's see. Good. Yes, good, okay. Let's do it again, okay? So from me, let's see bottom. So just a nice little stance, sink down as low as you want, okay? As we lift up, left arm connects to the right forearm. We continue lifting up as we step. One forward, one back as we shift our weight forward. Okay, let's do it one more time. So stepping back to your empty stance, our shoulders are square. Okay, waist is forward. As we lift up, there's a little bit of rotation in the waist. We step, we're kind of to the corner, and then we open up. So there's waist turning as we open up. Yes. Oh, I love seeing these movements, guys. They look good. Everyone's shoulders and elbows are down. Have you guys been doing the 10 Essentials class with Nancy? <laughs> All right, any questions on this movement? Do we understand the meaning of both of these movements today? Yes, Sam. Okay, I have one question because obviously I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> but when you're doing the fan through the back, do you want your foot extension to be at the same time you're connecting with your hands or is there a little bit of a delay there? So you connect first. So I'm gonna do it facing the camera. So we're in needle at sea bottom, okay? So you can see my feet. As I lift up, I touch, I connect. I continue lifting as I step out. Now my heel's touching, he, like ball toe weight moving forward. So we touch immediately. So we're lifting up and we touch. Now you'll notice I'm at shoulder height here and then I'm lifting up a little bit more as I step out and then forward and back. Okay, that helps. I've been doing them at the same time. So when the foot goes out, I've been doing the top of the hand touch and then extending. Yeah, we wanna make sure that we're connecting first. And you can think about the meaning here because we're connecting to our opponent first and we're lifting them up. So we wanna make sure that the meaning is clear. We're trapping them, lifting them, and then with our bow stance, pulling and striking. Good, let's do it again thinking about that, okay? Marianne, we'll get to you in one second. Just let's practice one more time. Okay, so from needle at sea bottom, thinking about the meaning here, connecting, 
lifting your opponent, stepping out and striking. One more time with the meaning. So needle at sea bottom, connecting as you lift up, lifting up your opponent's arm and then striking to their side body. Okay, was that better, Sam? All right. Okay, Marion, what do you got for me? So in needle at seat bottom, when you pull your hand back and you're getting out of a hand grab, you do not bring your elbow straight back. You bring it, you keep it in your, your usual rounded chest position. But in this one, you do pull your arm straight back. Is that because of the height of the grab? Hand rotation. Everyone pick up your arm. Put your palm towards your head, keep your elbow down. Rotate your palm the other way, shoulder down. Focus on your shoulder here. What happens? So not just like this, point your fingers towards me. Do you feel it? So this is all, this is the shoulder rotation. So when our fingers point towards us, our elbow drops down more. But when we're, our palm is out, our shoulder can be in the same position. You might even be able to see it. So this is not changing, right? Like I'm not doing like this, but there's a little bit of a difference. But I see that, but I also wonder, I mean, so in the other one, yeah. it looks like you're pulling straight back. Your elbow is, pointed out like a bird wing as you could, you know, so you can go to single whip, coming back. So it's pointing behind you essentially, but it's mm -hmm. not in, um, you know, the previous one. Okay. Little so with this one, we're pulling back our elbows going back. This one is, so this one, you have your opponent trap here. Okay. So you've trapped them and you're re-grabbing here and pulling, you're pulling on your opponent. When we're doing needle at sea bottom, we're trying to just break their grab. So our focus is on our fingertips coming back. Okay, so there's no grab motion here, right? This is just a sliding out. Whereas in order to grab, we'd have to grab and pull back. Does that make sense? Is that a better description? Yeah, I guess the point is like, at what, why, you know, why we would be doing that? At what is different about the opponent that we would need to do that, I guess? So. The meaning, right? So this is the, the, we're sliding out. So we're focused on our palm here. We're sliding. Here, we're focused on grabbing. So we couldn't grab our opponent, right, with, our, with this position. But like this, we can grab. Now, maybe when we do this in person, maybe it's a little bit lower, you know, maybe depending on the situation, right? So the form, we have a standard with the form, like a standard movements, right? That we're going for with the form. But when you would do this with an opponent, you might not be, and you most likely won't be in the same position that you end up in when we practice the form. So that's something to note. Like when we do these things, it's the same thing as like we're grabbing and we show breaking the grab, but we don't actually do this <laughs> in the form. You know, same thing as we don't show grab here, but that's the meaning. So it, all of these things, like the perfect example is diagonal flying. When you do this movement in the form, we're like this. It is this huge movement. When you do this in person, you're gonna grab and you might go to here. And that's all you get is this little bit because you're gonna impact their ribs. You know, so it's the same thing here that we're showing this or we're showing this, but maybe, maybe it's lower. Maybe we only get to here, you know, or maybe when we do this, it's like you, you strike, like you're striking through, you know, there's something like when I, when you teach classes in person and you have someone to show this with, the first thing that you talk about is throwing a punch. And why do you talk about throwing a punch? First of all, how to make a fist. You know, we talk about this in the first section about how to make a solid fist, that you have a flat surface and you're closed. There's not like a gap or you're not like crunching in your 
little fingers or have your thumbs sticking out. So we talk about that. But what we talk about is that if, say the lamp is the person, right? Because that's like in your three-dimensional or in your flat screen view. When I punch, I'm not going to punch just to that person, right? I'm going to punch through them. So it's the same thing when we do these movements. When I'm doing this, I'm imagining I'm going through the person. So you're extending through them. So these are things to think about in the martial arts applications of it. When we're doing this, you're, you're thinking, you're not just meeting your opponent, you're going through them. You're putting all of that energy into that one point that's gonna go past and through them and then send them flying. Or, you know, damage ribs or whatever it is that we're doing with this movement, right? Thank you, that helps a lot. You're welcome. So let's do it again. Let's do both movements so we can think about the difference between the two of them. So from brush knee, left foot forward, shifting, fingertips point down, pull back, elbow down, change to the ball of the foot, sink down, lift up, touch the wrist, continue lifting as you step out, one arm forward, one back. Feel like you're upright, like single whip, shoulders are still down. Looking over our left palm. Relax your arms, check your stance for a moment. How'd we do? Did we get a good bow stance in our end posture? Good, yes. It's always good to have those little checkpoints, you know, like especially in class, we do a lot of practice and classing, you know, if you if you come to the same times, like you feel like you're repeating movements, but it's a good thing. So when we stop and pause, check, you know, is my waist relaxed or my shoulders down? Like these are great things to be working on, okay? So let's do it a couple of more times and then we'll close class. And then next week, um, what do we have? Turn body and chop with fists. So I'll demonstrate that for people that are new when uh, right before we close. So let's practice one more time, okay? So from brush knee, shifting forward, fingertips point down, weight moving back, pulling out of a grab, change to the toes, sink down, lift up, touch, keeping your opponent's arm connected, you would re-grab and pull them into your strike. Okay. All right, I'm gonna demo real quick and then we're gonna practice one more time, okay? So for anyone who's new, this is what we're gonna be working on next week. So we're coming from fan through the back and we're gonna go into turn body and chop with this. So we move back our weight, we circle our arms, one's protecting our head, one's pushing down. We're gonna make a fist, we're gonna chop out to our opponent's face, and then they move back, so we strike them with our palm. Okay, one more time. So fan through the back. We shift back. We're kind of circling the arms. We make a fist. We show chopping and then striking. Okay? So that's next week's class. But right now, let's practice one more time. Let's see, let's do it all. Let's get one more good practice in. So from cross hands all the way through to fan through the back. All right, cross hands. Shifting the weight, embrace the tiger, return to the mountain. Roll back. Press and push. Transition like single whip, except we're pushing out to the side and we're going into fist under elbow. Repulse monkey, number one. Step back, pushing off the front heel. Circling, foot touches, hands in front of the shoulder. 
Number three. One arm forward, one back. Diagonal flying, circle the arms. Stepping out, waist turning, splitting energy. Raise hands and step forward. Change into the heel, turning the waist. White crane. Circle, close step, open up, ball of the foot touch. Brush knee, circle. Bow stance, open, strike. Needle at sea bottom, shifting, fingers down, pull back, come up on the heel, change to the ball of the foot, sink down. Fan through the back, touching the right wrist, change to bow stance, open up. Okay. Great work today, everyone. It was a great class. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your day and practice with Kelly tomorrow at 11. Thank you, Thank Cheryl. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Great class. You guys, yeah, you guys are doing great. Thank you. Great well, you're a good class. teacher.